Bibles to the book of John, chapter number 5. see, amen, where we see the impossible being done, amen, where we ask God for the needs of our life, and we believe them by faith that it's going to happen, amen. We just have to keep on praying and keep on believing, amen, trusting God to work and move. Praise God. Do you still have faith? Amen. Amen. I pray the gauge is full. I pray that it's, even if it's small, as small as a grain of mustard seed. I can still do a lot of good stuff. And just remember that it's that mustard seed that grows. And as it grows, uh, the Bible says that the birds of the air have a place to uh, lodge in. So our faith can see the mountain be moved and it can provide a resting place and shelter for someone else. As I said, I was very encouraged as I heard of uh, Barbara Bush. You know, it's, it's unfortunate sometimes we don't really... Uh, Brother Craig take the liberty to indulge and sing about someone's life until after they're gone. But uh, I heard that, uh, you know, I heard one lady saying about Barbara Bush that uh, she was the type of lady that when you worked for her in the White House, you wanted her approval. You didn't want her to uh, in any way disapprove of you. Um, but it was easy to give her, get her approval and you wanted to keep it. And uh, one thing that I know about Barbara Bush was this, uh, is that she always had gray hair. You know, she, uh, ever since I can remember, she had gray hair. She wasn't one of those being, uh, you know, that even at a young age, she wanted to uh, make it uh, colorful to look young. She was just, uh, just a, 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 a lovely lady, uh, just the way she looked. But, but it was interesting, I heard this week as well, that she had a child who had cancer and died. A young child. And uh, her hair turned gray very quickly after that. In fact, I believe she lost two children. And uh, you, you look at folks' lives, we see their victory. But we don't always know the struggle that they had to get to where they were at. She was asked to come to a... Uh, to a, a women's conference and speak. And she said, why would you want me to come to a women's conference? I've never worked at a job where I earned a paycheck any of the days of my life. And they said, it's your character, it's your integrity. Amen. And to hear that God was at the forefront of that. Amen. I just, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, that legacy that was left. And so I uh, just want to share those couple things with you. Amen. Just, uh, I enjoyed Brother, uh, Brother Craig's history lesson, didn't you? Yes. Uh, history 101. Well, we'll be back for 102, Brother Craig, sometime soon. So have it ready. No, no, it's good. All right. John chapter number 5. The Bible says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews believed to be Passover. Amen. This is a little over a year into the public ministry of Jesus Christ. So we're not looking at it being far into his ministry, but this is even in the infancy of the beginning of it. The Bible says, Now there was a Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool, and, uh, or a gate to the sheep, however you want to look at that, uh, which, which in, in the Hebrew tongue is called the Seda, uh, having five porches. Couple of different things there. Number five uh, immediately gives us the idea of grace. The seda in itself, uh, when we look at that, or uh, Bethesda in itself, immediately when we look at that, uh, gives us in, in the Hebrew it means mercy. So we are at a place of grace and mercy. It really sounds like where each of us live, isn't it? Amen. Where we are at the crossroads of the grace and we're at the door of the mercy of God in our life. And uh, the Bible says 
and, and, and these lay great multitude of impotent folk, of blind of halt, of withered. And they were just helpless to be able to save themselves. That's what that, that impotent means. They, they had many, many, many uh, dis disabilities. And they simply were not able to do anything to correct the disability in their life or be able to get themselves to the pool, as we'll see further. Amen. Waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down a certain uh, uh, a season into the pool and troubled the water. It wasn't a folklore. This is a true story. Whosoever was, uh, was the first after the troubling of the water stepped in, uh, was made whole of whatsoever disease that he had. And uh, how amazing that uh, whoever got their foot in the water the first, amen, just had to be the tiptoe, Sister Susan. But if they got in the first while the water was troubled, there they were, that all their pain, all their misery, all their suffering was over. Wow. People are still looking for that today. Amen. What's the antidote? What's the cure? How can I get there? Amen. The Bible says, and there was, and a certain man was there. Amen. Which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. Amen. That's a long time to be sick. Amen. Imagine you with your sniffles, or imagine you with your acute whatever. Amen. Even some folks here that you have chronic things. Some of you haven't even bore it for thirty-eight years. But here's this man, thirty-eight years. The Bible says uh, when Jesus saw him and uh, he knew he had, had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will you be made whole? Uh, uh, this man knew that he was not whole and he could not be whole without Jesus. And the impotent man answered and said, I have no, uh, sir, I have no man. But when the water is troubled, he put me in the pool. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and he walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Amen. That means a great deal. The Sabbath, we'll talk more about that in, in, in quickness uh, a little bit later. But uh, I, I, I want us to, to, to look at this tonight. I want us to look at an element that every one of us in here should have in our life. It's called faith. And uh, faith, you know, I've heard people say, do we, uh, do we just say in the name of Jesus someone to you? Do we say, God, touch him with your nail scarred hand? Do we say, Lord, speak the word? Listen, folks. I'm not in a remedy, a rhyme, a method. Amen. I believe that however the Lord lays upon our heart and the Spirit to pray, amen, is how we pray. Amen. It's not the, the, the eloquence of the words. It's not even the picking of the words in our own flesh. But it is the faith that is exercised as we pray the prayer of faith that we see things happen. And so uh, familiar to us, the, the things about faith. And so I want us to talk about faith for a few minutes. I believe Jesus had a sense of humor, don't you? Do you? Do you believe he laughed? Do you? I really believe Jesus laughed. Do you know one of the main reasons why I believe that? Is I've never seen children attracted to grumpy older people. But I mean, the children came all around Jesus, didn't they? He said, some of the little children to come unto me. Why would they want to go unto not if he looked like he just uh, was sucking on a lemon? Um, but I believe that Jesus was uh, just a, 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 a type of man that exemplified the joy that is in living. He had fun. He enjoyed life uh, because it was a gift that he knew was given from his father. And so let me just say this. Uh, let me give you a little bit of funny as we talk about faith. I read a story of two nuns that were traveling. And uh, just don't lose out just because they're nuns. They're still, you know, we, we look at them. We don't agree with them theologically. Uh, but, but they represent a, uh, their, their faith uh, uh, tradition, and particularly in the garb that they were, their habit. And they were out traveling on a country road one day, and uh, they ran out of gas. Not a good situation to be in. 
And so uh, they begin to walk and they went to a, 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 a farmer's house and, and they said to the farmer, Farmer, do you have any gas that we can get? He said, I'll tell you what, I'm very busy. I don't have time to get the gas for you. But if you want, you can get some gas out of my tractor. And they said, that's, that's fine, but we don't have anything to put in it. So the, the farmer looked around and he found an old chamber pot. <laughs> yeah, do you know what that is? That's kind of like a bedside toilet. That's a, you know, a urinal, whatever you want to call it. It was an old chamber pot that he gave to them. And so they siphoned the gas and they put it in that chamber pot and they walked to where their car was. And there they were in, 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 in the, with that chamber pot. And they were putting gas in it. Uh, and a pedestrian, pedestrian or a, a, a driver buyer uh, was, was looking and, and, as he drove by and he saw what they were doing. And he turned around and he came back to the mountains. And he said, hey, ladies, I, you know, I just want to tell you, I don't agree with your fake tradition. I, I don't believe the way that you do. But I need to tell you, I really, really, really admire your faith. <laughs> if you didn't get an ounce, I'm going to take it out of church. <laughs> Amen. You know... There's a lot to be said about faith. Amen. So much material has been given to us about faith. You know, we look at it, some people think that it's that we just hope and we trust in God and that it's not going to happen and uh, we'll stumble or we consider when things don't happen. Some people have defined faith as uh, just that when you close the door to your refrigerator, you just know that the light is going off. Other people believe that faith is like this. A young daughter asked her mommy, uh, do all fairy tales begin with once upon a time? And her mother answered and said, no, darling. Some of them start with when I became a Christian, all my problems were over. Amen. You know, knowing that we can exercise faith in God, that no matter what the problem is, that God will see us through. That is faith tonight. That God will see us through. One man was asked after church, and went to church and went down to the local McDonald's, was drinking a cup of coffee, and someone walked up to him. He began to say that he came home from church, and uh, they started a conversation with him and said, Can I ask you, do you really believe that Jesus turned the water into wine? The man said, Well, the Word of God says so. He said, I don't know much about that. I wasn't there. He said, But what I can't tell you about, he did turn a man who was addicted to alcohol into a free man. And he did change this uh, better who was in debt to a man who was able to pay his bills. Let me tell you what faith can do. Faith can change a life. Yes. And so tonight I just want to simply look at faith for a few minutes. I've been humorous. I've tried to bring it home to you in various ways. But I just want you to know that faith can change our situation. Everything about our situation can be changed by putting our faith in God. And I do believe that God wants us to bring faith to a personal level. And I think that there's a couple of things about faith that I want us to realize tonight. The very first thing is that faith gives us the knowledge that God will come to us. As we look at this man who was unable to walk and get to the Port of Bethesda, he was living right there at the crossroads of grace and mercy, but he could not get to the pool because someone else beat him to the pool because before he could get in. He had been there, he'd suffered with his illness for 38 years, how long he had been laying there beside the Port of Bethesda, I, I, I don't know, but, but he was there because of one reason, there was a faint hope that he would be able to to get to the water and become healed. So he, he, he stuck around in the place where he knew that, that, that he could put his hope and his faith in something. I, I need to tell you that sometimes we can carry our burdens. 
We can carry the things that we want God to move in for a very, very long time. But if I could be that, uh, that booster tonight to tell you to maintain your hope and your confidence and your trust because God will come. Amen. One day that man couldn't get to the pool, but God came to him and met his needs. Jesus, He loves to come to the place where people are attracted to hope. He loves to come to the place where people are looking for divine movement. Amen. He lo loves to come to the place where, where there are physical handicaps or there are disabilities and He loves to work and move. You may say, I'm deficient in this area. I have a disability in this area. I'm handicapped in this area. Ah, you're at the right place tonight. You're keeping yourself by the place of grace and mercy and God will come by. Amen. I know that we experience God in every service and maybe some folks will say, I experience God but I still have this situation that I'm working on. I want you to know that God is still able because God still comes by to people. No one to help him. He never had the hope of being healed on his own. The man was paralyzed in the sight of healing. His situation probably to him did look hopeless. Paralyzed in his place and in the sight of healing. Wow. Can you imagine that? But I would say that there's probably some in here tonight that you're the same way. You still have things in your life that you want God to work and work. <coughs> Don't be paralyzed in a place of hope and in the sight of healing because God still passes by. When we're unable to help ourselves, He still passes by to help us. Amen. He has a special work. He has a special solution. Amen. He has an outcome for your situation. He will come. The second thing is, not only will He come, but He will meet your need. Amen. This evening, I want you to know that, that when we look at faith, amen, knowing that God will meet our need. Here it is. Uh, he was asked, do you want to be whole? Uh, the, the man who, who, who was not able to get himself to the pool said, of course I, I want to be whole. You see, Jesus knows what you have need of. He knows what you've got through. He knows how long that you've been there. Amen. The only question he asked him is, do you want to be whole? You see, in the condition that he was in, amen, the man could have been very content. After 38 years, he may have been resolved that this is the way it is. But he said, no, I don't want to be here. Some of you have needs or situations in your life and maybe... You feel like you've become adapt to them. Amen. Are you content with just being adapt to them? Or do you still really want God to make you whole in those areas? I'm asking. Are there some needs that maybe you put on the back shelf? It's on the back burner. Maybe you try not even to think about it because you try to put it out of sight, out of mind. Because it seems like right in the sight of victory here. It doesn't seem like it can happen. I believe God's here tonight saying, do you want to be home? Do you want me to move in that area of your life? Because I can. And I will. Amen. His ability. Amen. He is able to change the situation. I don't think I'm greatly beyond 38 years of age. I still remember when I was there. But 38 years is a long time, Brother Craig. I mean, that's a long time. 38 years. There's some in here that's bypassed that. There's some of you that's not even there. But we all could agree that 38 years is a very long time. If you had a need in your body for 38 years, you may just become, I've lived with it this far. I guess I can live with it the rest of my life. But Jesus said it doesn't have to be that way. What are the things that have been there so long, but yet you still desire God to meet them? They don't have to remain there. God can touch, and God can change. You see, it's not about you and what you can do tonight. It's not about 
just a secret handshake, a secret code. It's about God who is able. The religious leaders of the day, you think they would have combined allowing him to be healed on the Sabbath? They, they were too busy keeping all their traditions and keeping everything in alignment. But, but, but Jesus wasn't worried about all that alignment. What he was worried about was getting to the individual that had needs. He couldn't do it himself. He didn't have the resources. He didn't have the ability. But Jesus came by and met them. Hey, let me tell you something. You may say, Brother Seville, this is Sunday night. Hey, Amen. We're not swinging from the fans, even though they're on. Brother Seville, I'm tired. You, you, you may say all the things that you think need to be for the service. You may say, well, no one's really singing down the glory of God. Amen. No one's running the backs of the pews. No one's running the aisles. You may think that it has to have all these things. But all it needs is for Jesus to show up. And I believe He's here. I believe He's here. I know He's here. Because it's the deep confidence of the soul of knowing that He's here. So here it is. All these religious leaders, they fail to, to be able to reach out and to see someone's need met. But Jesus said, I'm not worried about keeping all the eyes dotted and all the T's crossed. What I'm worried about is the need of a man who has not given up hope, even in the sight of hope. Even in the sight of healing, still holds on to hope. Tonight, that is faith. Holding on. Even though the days and the years pass. Holding on when it seems like we can't get to the pool. Holding on when we are deficient in the sight of healing. But faith says, I'm still I want to keep on trusting that one day Jesus will pass by. And when he does, he will make me whole. Sir Beth, if you'll come to the piano tonight. All it takes is faith. A little bit of it. We can say to the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Or have you settled for your disability? Have you settled for your deficiency? Let me just say a few things tonight. If you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, God wants to fill you with the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues. Don't be deficient. God can do it. You may say, supposed to go and pray for years. Tonight could be your time. Some of you, you've struggled with things of your past and can't get the victory over. God wants to give you victory. It's time to stop with the struggle and to allow the Lord to speak the word. Don't worry about going through some routine and dipping in the pool. Just allow Jesus to pass by and speak the word to your soul. There are some that need victories in areas of your life. Maybe you wondered, am I ever going to get them? It's time to allow faith to arise. Let faith arise. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith. But without faith, tonight we are not able to please God. Let's allow this Sunday evening service to allow us the liberty of knowing that when we leave this building, that we please God because we've reached out to Him with faith. Faith says that which is impossible with man is a possibility with God. This morning, I come by and I shook hands with Heather. And I forget what she said. I, you know, um, something about she didn't, she didn't get something done. And her dad looked over and said, you're fired. And I said, what do you think about that, Heather? She said, oh, that's okay. I didn't want to work for him anyway. <laughs> She 
She had a quick wit. A little over a year ago, they told us that would never be. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. The man lying in the hospital bed that said to me, 20 years ago, they gave me three months. I know God's able to do something. Amen. Amen. To a former president of the United States who said, because it, mom's soul was comforted. My wife, my girls, and I, we are comforted. Do you know why? Because faith says we hate goodbyes, but our worst day is their best day ever. Faith says we'll meet again. You see, faith changes situations and faith changes circumstances. What is your circumstance that you need changed? Tonight, Amen. Maybe you feel like you're at the crossroads of grace and mercy. We all are. Maybe we see healing within sight but can't get there. But I gotta tell you that there will come a day when Jesus will pass by. And he's gonna ask, do you still want it? Don't be comfortable living with a deficiency. But say, God, I want it. It is mine. Do I have some folks who will come to the altar and say, God, I want it tonight. I want it. You want it? Do you want it tonight? Amen. And step out while the waters are troubled and allow the Savior to meet you. Come with faith and trust and believe Him to meet your need. Would you come tonight? God, I'm coming by faith. Amen. Because the impossible is possible for those who believe.